Hello folks, hope all of you are doing good. Uh, this is a first part in a series of design of irrigation canals. In the segment, uh, sediment transport being a very basic prerequisite for the design of irrigation canals uh, is dealt in detail. Whenever uh, water flows in a channel, it may be natural or artificial, it tries to cover its surface. Uh, silt or gravel or even large boulders are detached from the bed or sides of the channel. These detached particles are swept downstream by the moving water and this phenomenon is referred to as the sediment transport. Now why sediment transport is so important? Remember we are in the process of designing the irrigation canals. The capacity of irrigation canals are governed by the sediment load and their transport. Why they are so important? There are three aspects. The phenomenon of uh, uh, sediment transport causes large scales covering and siltation of irrigation canals thereby increasing their maintenance. Many poorly designed artificial channels, they get silted up so badly that uh, they soon become uh, inoperable, causing huge economic loss to the public uh, sector. The second one, the design and uh, execution of a flood control scheme is chiefly governed by the peak flood levels, which in turn depend on uh, the scour and deposition of sediment. And the third one, the last one being silting of reservoirs and rivers is another important aspect of sediment transport. The storage capacity of the reservoir is reduced by its silting, thereby reducing its use and uh, its lifespan. So whenever uh, sediment transport is referred to, one has to look into the, the actual aspect of uh, the modes of sediment transport in a riverine system. In the riverine system, as given in the diagram, there is a stream flow in one direction and you have certain loads like suspended load, uh, dissolved load, uh, dissolved load obviously it is present in the solution form and all these things are formed whenever the turbulence is introduced. So the sediment in a canal is a burden to borne. There are two types of loads as far as sediment load is concerned. One is bed load and the other one is suspended load. Uh, the sediment may move in water uh, either as bed load or suspended load. Bed load is uh, that in which the sediment moves along the bed with the certain occasional jumps into the channel while the suspended load uh, is one in which the material is maintained in suspension due to the turbulence of flowing water. So the channel bed may be distorted into various shapes by moving water uh, depending upon the discharge or velocity of water. So as far as design is concerned, the velocity is a prime factor. Uh, at the same time, uh, the design of stable channels, they follow all these uh, criteria. Now we have learned so many formulae related to the capacity determination. It may be the Manning's formula, Chegi's formula or Cutter's formula that we could directly apply. The evaluation of resistance of alluvial streams is a very complex problem as far as channels are concerned. So the complexity increases with the channel shape, sediment grain, discharge variations and several other factors. So it's based on certain hypothetical theories which have implemented on the Indian soil, we are designing the stable channels. Alluvial channels are designed based on hypothetical theories given by uh, the Kennedy and Lacey. So these designs mainly they are based on experiment, experiences on the existing channels over the years, at least uh, 30 years or so. So one must think to design such a channel in which neither scarring nor silting takes place that would be a dealt in the next part of the same series so our aim would be to design a stable or so-called regime channels
थैंक यू